Yellow. Okay, so this is the last of our neuro lectures, and uh, all we have to cover is the ear or auditory. So uh, this is the lecture on hearing. So three regions of the uh, ear. Basically, you have the external, the middle, and the internal ear. The external ear, that's basically the oracle. So that's the outside part that you can see. It directs the sound waves towards the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. Uh, we'll talk about the auditory canal in just a minute. Uh, well, let's do it now. It's lined with hair and ceremonious glands. Don't even worry about those. I'm not gonna ask about that, but that makes the earwax, which is kind of protective, but it can cause a problem if it builds up. Uh, you're not supposed to put Q-tips in the ear. You're supposed to wash them out with the you know, the uh, little oil and all of that, that they, you can buy those packs at the store. You can go to the doctor and get it done. So the external acoustic meatus or external auditory canals tube that ends at the tympanic membrane. It's about 2.5 centimeters long. I'm not gonna ask you that. And the tympanic membrane is a thin, delicate, kind of connective tissue sheet, and it'll vibrate when the um, sound waves hit it. Okay, so let's take a look at some of this. So here's the oracle or the external ear. Uh, some call it the pinna. I hardly ever hear it called that anymore. And then here's the external acoustic meatus. Now, don't confuse this external acoustic meatus with this tube down here, which is called the auditory tube. We'll get to that in a little bit. Here's the eardrum. I'll give you the point if you call it the eardrum. If I put a pointer on it and say, what is that eardrum? I'd rather you say tympanic membrane, but eardrum will work. So these three little bones are called the ossicles. So you have the um, malleus, the incus, and the stapes. Uh, the old names are hammer, anvil, and stirrup. Like, you know, stirrup you put your boot in when you're riding a horse. Um, this window that's oval is called the oval window, and you got another one down here that's round, and it's called the round window, and we'll get to that. Now, the middle ear, if you follow this dashed line and this little blue line, it's real hard to see. It's going down like this. That's all middle ear. All of this is considered middle, middle ear. On this side of this little blue line, you know, you got your semicircular canals, your vestibule, and your cochlea. All that's considered inner ear. Okay. So the ossicles are in a little air-filled space. You got the malleus, which is a, it means mallet, right, or hammer, attached to the eardrum. You got the incus, that's the one in the middle. It used to be called the anvil, like a blacksmith's anvil. Uh, and you got the stapes. Uh, which uh, they used to call the stirrup, and that's attached to the oval window. So these things connect the tympanic membrane with the receptor complex of the inner ear, and it transfers the vibrations from the, from the eardrum to the fluid-filled chambers within the inner ear. 
So they amplify and strengthen these vibrations. There are little skeletal muscles in there that can dampen the vibrations if it's, if it's too loud, but don't depend on them. They're not that great. Auditory tubes about four centimeters long. Um, passes through the temporal bone. It's normally kind of collapsed or sealed off, but you can, you know, you can uh, pop your ears and basically that allows the pressure to e equilibrate with the atmospheric pressure outside. You know, like chewing or yawning and swallowing can cause that little pop. Uh, the pressure must be equal on both sides of the tympanic membrane or there might be a distortion of the membrane. So, um, Let's go back a little bit. So let's say you're at sea level, like around San Diego. And so this air that would be trapped in here would be at you know, sea level pressure, and so would this. But then you go up the mountain and say the Big Bear. So now, say this air is still trapped. Say this is kind of closed off, and this you still have sea level pressure in here, but now you're going up into thinner and thinner air as you go up the mountain. So this is gonna press out on that um, membrane and it's gonna cause it not to work as effectively. Same thing if it's all equilibrated, you're up on the mountain, now you've got thin uh, lower pressure air trapped here and thin air out here. When you go down the mountain, then it's gonna get um, higher and higher pressure and then that's gonna push this way on the membrane and make it not as effective. But you can luckily, equilibrate if you can pop your ears. That's why all the babies start crying when you, you know, the airplane takes off and it starts uh, gaining altitude. They don't know how to pop their ears and it's very uncomfortable for them. Uh, luckily, um, sometimes mom or dad will give them a bottle and then they'll start uh, suckling on that and it'll pop their ears <laughs> and then hopefully fix the problem. <clears throat> so, uh, where were we? The auditory tube. That's this guy. Don't confuse it with the external acoustic meatus. That's this guy. So the auditory tube is for equalizing the pressure. The old name is the eustachian tube. A lot of people still call it eustachian. I do too, just because auditory is so easily mixed up with the external acoustic meatus. Um, uh, sometimes your nose and throat, uh, guys and gals, will call it a Faringo tympanic tube. I, I hardly ever hear that used. Um, usually I just hear eustachian or auditory tube. I, I, I stick with eustachian. Okay. Uh, these are those little skeletal muscles. I'm not going to ask you to name them, but say you're in some real loud environment like a disco. Well, they probably don't have discos anymore, but say <laughs> you're in a concert, it's very loud. Uh, these can uh, tighten up, you know, it's like a reflex basically, and kind of dampen the motion that's going through them um, and kind of protect the inner ear. They don't work that great. Earplugs are a lot better. <laughs> and that's just a close up of the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup, or as they're now called, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. So the bony labyrinth, this is kind of a difficult little concept. Um, so remember the petrous portion of the temporal lobe that I lectured about um, on the bone test? Um, so the petrous part, it's this cochlea, the semicircular canals, uh, all of that, uh, the vestibule, it's hollowed out inside of that uh, portion of your of your bone. Um, so it's important to realize that this cochlea, this vestibule, these semicirculars, there's not something in your head that you can take out that will look like this. This is hollowed out in this shape. It's just the only way they have to show it is to make a model like this. But really this is hollow in, in this shape and that's the bony labyrinth. And inside that bony labyrinth is membrane bound area. And that would be the membranous labyrinth. And they usually draw that in blue. Uh, I should have a picture of that. Oops, sorry. Let's go back. <laughs> sorry, I hit the wrong button. Um, let's 
So let's see if we can find the membranous labyrinth. This in blue would be the membranous labyrinth and that's fluid filled. Um, and we'll, we'll come back to that, all right? This is the way that all of this sits in, here's your petrous portion, your temporal bone, petrous portion, your temporal bone. And this is all hollowed out in this shape, okay? All right, so let's see, the semicircular canals, that's for uh, equilibrium and the vestibule is too. And then the cochlea is for hearing. So remember the vestibular cochlear nerve, the vestibule is basically for your balance and uh, the cochlea is for your hearing, okay? So the mechanoreceptors are, there are mechanoreceptors found in the cochlea, the cochlea. The stapes vibrates against the oval window and it moves the fluid. Hair cells bend as the sound waves move the fluid, which is endolymph. This will make more sense in a minute, okay? So it's important to understand though that bony labyrinth is a hollow area inside the bone and inside of that is a membranous labyrinth and then there's fluid inside of both of these. Okay, so let's take a look. So we're going to concentrate on the cochlea first. We're going to do hearing first. Remember this part's for hearing and this part's for balance. Okay, you got two different kinds of equilibrium. You have static and dynamic, and we'll get to that in a little bit. So let's go to here. So if you cut across that cochlea, it's gonna look like this. So that's a spiral thing. So this is connected to this, is connected to the, you know, it's going around and around like a little spiral, two and a half turns. And so when you cut it, you just see these little, almost like windows. So it's hard to, it's hard to describe this. The best way, to describe it, let's act like it's not in a circle, not in a spiral. Uh, just imagine a tunnel, you know, going through a mountain and it's for a train. And the train is sitting in that tunnel, right? And the cars where the people sit, let's just imagine it's one long car instead of a bunch of separate cars. The car would be this, that's where the people sit. And this is the tunnel that it's in, okay? And so it's kind of like the, kind of like uh, inside the car, there would be fluid, and in the tunnel around the car, there would be fluid, okay? So this fluid right here is called perilymph, and this fluid that's in here is called endolymph. So let's just learn the structures right now. So that's a membrane, that's a membrane, and that's a membrane, okay? Um, that's a duct, that's a duct, and that's a duct. So let's just name the ducts first. Vestibular duct, you can see it here. Tympanic duct, you can see it down here. And cochlear duct, right here. So I could go, what's the space A? You'd go vestibular duct. What kind of fluid is inside of it? and you would go perilymph. What's the space B? And you go cochlear duct. What kind of fluid is in there? Endolymph. What is this duct? You would go tympanic duct. What kind of fluid is in it? You would go perilymph. Now it's, it's you gotta realize this duct and this duct, they're connected up top. So this fluid, the perilymph that's in here is flowing into the perilymph in here. So they're all connected. It's all the same perilymph. Okay, but this endolymph is sealed off from the perilymph. Okay, so it, it stays separate because that's inside your membranous labyrinth. Okay, let's look at it a little closer and this is the way it would be on the test. Go, what's the space? What's a, what's a duct? Sorry, what's that duct? What's that duct? What's that duct? You can go vestibular duct. Cochlear duct, tympanic duct. Don't pay attention to in, this in parentheses. They used those years and years and years ago. 
scala vestibuli, scala media, scala timpani. They don't use that anymore. They go vestibular duct, cochlear duct, uh, tympanic duct. Now, we got a membrane up here, so that would be the vestibular membrane. We got a membrane at the base, so that would be the basilar membrane. Don't call it basement membrane. That's different. That's what you know, epithelial cells have basically. This is a this is a pretty thick membrane here. On the membrane is sitting hair cells. See the little hair cells down here? And this little membrane that's only going halfway across, they drew it in pink. That's the tectorial membrane. So it's kind of flopped up here in real life. It's down uh, touching real close to these hair cells. And those hair cells have little hairs. They're not real hairs. See these little guys are called stereocilia. And they're in these, you know, you got a row of three here and then you got another row here, a um, uh, single row here. And so you got bunches and bunches of these. But when vibrations happen in here, these things that are kind of resting against this tectorial membrane, they, they rub back and forth because of the vibrations. And these are just little mechanoreceptors. And so that sends signals, you know, to your temporal lobe. You go, oh, it's vibrating, that's sound. And then you'll pick that up as sound. So let's go back. So at the bottom, so it's important to realize that this basilar membrane goes all the way around, and that's the same basilar membrane. It goes all the way around, all the way around, all the way around, right? So that cochlear duct is the same cochlear duct that's going around and around and around, two and a half turns. So different, this is pretty stiff down here. It's pretty thick. So this responds the, to real fast vibrations. It's like a guitar string that's tight. You know, it's going to be higher pitched. This up here is low and loose. So if this is vibrating because of, you know, it's just picking up those vibrations from the fluid, uh, you're going to sense that as a low sound. Here, it's going to be kind of middle sound. So it's important to realize when you're listening to like an orchestra or whatever, you know, you got all kind of things going. Piccolos and flutes, you know, they're vibrating in these lower regions down here because that's high pitch. Then you got your middle, you know, it could be like your violins and your piano and all that could be going here. And then uh, uh, way up here is going to be bass. So you got high pitch at the bottom. You got middle at the middle, and then you got low pitch up here. So like your bass and maybe an oboe or a tuba, <laughs> right? So this would vibrate in response to that. And there's plenty of good videos on YouTube that show you how this work works. And so lots of these places are vibrating at different times and different places, and your brain just puts all of that together and then you remember it as a musical piece, right? And so it's very, very complicated, you know, the way it's all integrated. Um, oh, by the way, these little ganglia right here are called spiral ganglia. I have done that if I just run out of things to point at. Um, you know, it'd be a bonus if I did. And you can see this is going into the cochlear branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve. This vest vestibular part is going over there to that vestibule. It's really almost like two nerves because balance goes to your cerebellum and then hearing goes to your temporal lobe. Remember? I think you do. All right. So I kind of like it on a, on a slide where that tectoral membrane flops up in real life when I have a real microscope because I can put the pointer on it. Go, what is that membrane? Tectorial membrane. Okay, what is that membrane? That's your vestibular membrane. So this is just a close up. So this box, so basically we're looking at that right here. So that business uh, end, right, this business box right here that goes all around, that's called the organ of corti, uh, C-O-R-T-I. Um, so on your microscope slides, it would say organ of corti, and then you put it under there and you would have this, right? But there's a lot of parts in there, right? You got the vestibular membrane. This would be vestibular duct, cochlear duct, tympanic duct, um, with perilymph out here, endolymph out in here, 
period lymph out here, basilar membrane, hair cells, tectorial membrane. Uh, sometimes I ask a question, what is that? I go, basilar membrane. What kind of cells are sitting on top of it? You go, hair cells. And the hairs are called stereocilia. So we talked about this, the endolymph and the perilymph. It should make sense now. And um, what else we got? Uh, intent, uh, this is just kind of FYI. I do ask, every now and then I'll ask a question on, uh, on maybe pitch or frequency. Let's just go over them real quick. So intensity is just how loud it is. Frequency. That's your pitch, you know, like a high pitch versus a low pitch. So we hear from 20 to 20,000 hertz. Hertz being how many vibrations per second? 20 vibrations per second would be real low. 20,000 probably would be above a mosquito. You know, it's very, very high pitched. Most of our best hearing is in between the one and 3,000 hertz range. And by the way, that decreases with age. So protect your ears. The more loud noises you're around, uh, the more damage you can do to those little hair cells and they don't grow back. Whoever gets them to grow back is going to win the Nobel Prize. They, they tried and tried, but they had not a lot of success yet. Um, but yeah, that's, that, that's a problem. So get your hearing tested and then every couple of years or whatever, get it tested again and make sure you're not losing hearing uh, because everybody wears these earbuds now and that's very, very direct um you know sound just being funneled right into your external acoustic meatus so i really worry about it when i see all the kids with the, you know their their music going full blast and you can even hear it from a couple of feet you know a few feet away and you go wow that's loud they're supposed to have limiters that cut down on that but just turn it down because <laughs> uh the hearing does not come back i know professional mus musicians and they uh studio musicians and they wear earplugs all day long except for when they're working because they're trying to preserve their hearing phase is just which direction it's coming from so if something clicks on your right side sound has a you know a speed like 700 750 miles an hour depending on you know where you are in the atmosphere uh how thick the atmosphere is and all that um and so it's going to hit your right ear first and then just a millisecond later it's going to hit your left ear but your brain can tell well that came from the right side or it came from the left side and that's how you kind of figure out where the sounds are coming from timber that's a weird one it's just kind of like the texture so if you hit middle c on the piano and then hit that same c note on a violin you can tell one's a piano one's a violin you know even though it's the same note so it's kind of like that texture of the note i'm not going to do a tracing um, I can do point and name stuff. So this oval window and go, what's this window? Sometimes I go, what's this window shaped like an oval? Just making a joke. <laughs> and it's obviously the oval window and this around. So when this pushes in from the vibrations, it sets up vibrations in this cochlea. And that's what's picked up, you know, by those hair cells in the tectoral membrane that's resting on them. Um, now you can't compress a fluid so you got to have this little round window it's kind of got a membrane on it so when this presses in that kind of bulges out you know so and then so you set up this oscillation in there um if you go to youtube they'll have a really good video of that on many many places they they have some really good videos of the uh, cochlea and how it works um so everything with a box basically that we've talked about and I'm not going to make you do a tracing, just make you make sure you know that it does go through the thalamus because almost everything sensory goes through the thalamus and you end up in the temporal lobes. So equilibrium, that's balance. So remember I said you got two kinds. You have, um, you have static equilibrium and you have dynamic equilibrium. Dynamic. So dynamic detects movement of the head and the body, where static is just say you move your head to the right and you hold it there. Even with your eyes closed, you know your head is leaning to the right. And that's because uh, you're sensing that uh, 
static equilibrium, and I'll show you kind of how that works. So, right here, this area, oh, I, by the way, utricle and saccule I have done as bonuses. If I point at that, call it the utricle. If I point at that, call it the uh, saccule. But if I'm just talking about this whole area in general right here, I go, does this detect static or dynamic equilibrium? You would go static. Now, I don't have a good, uh, I don't have a picture of this on the PowerPoint, but it's in your book. Look for the, uh, it, it's little blue rocks <laughs> and they're made of calcium carbonate. I forget what page it's on in the ninth edition. Darn it, I can't remember. It's 400 and something, 437 or something. I can't remember. Um, just look it up. So they're called otoliths. O-T-O-L-I-T-H. Um, that's the old name, which I like.